Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where you know the deal. People truly believe they can do what they want, when they want, because they're special. And in today's episode, guys, an Entitled family tries to kidnap OP's dog, and they end up taking them to court after the dog fights back. It's ridiculous. I hope you enjoy the stories, don't shake your heads too hard, and as always, you can send or link your crazy stories to this email right here. Alright, so my husband and I have been married for 3 years, together for 6. He's 43 and I'm 31. Now obviously, there's an age gap between my husband and I, which has never been an issue for us. My mother-in-law Karen, however, has always greatly disapproved and she likes to talk to me like I'm a rebellious teenager, instead of her son's life partner. So a big issue for her is the fact that she doesn't see me as a responsible adult because I have tattoos. I love all my tattoos, they're all well done and a huge part of my identity. I can't imagine myself without them and my husband loves how they look on me. My mother-in-law has made a few comments while we were dating, but my husband told her privately to drop it. So with that said, here's the story. Three years ago, my husband and I hosted our families for my birthday dinner. It was our first big get-together after getting married and everyone was nice enough to bring me a gift. I was going to open them after everyone left. But mother-in-law hands me an envelope right at the dinner table and insisted I open her gift immediately. Inside was a card and a gift certificate to a local tattoo removal business for $500. At this, I was confused and I asked her what this was for. She said that since I'm now a married woman and planning to have kids, that I would need to get rid of all my tattoos. Hearing her say that, both my husband and I were kind of taken aback and stunned. I half-heartedly thanked her and the party continued. Later on, my husband called her and told her off. He insisted she take it back and get her money back and she absolutely refused and insisted that I would want it someday. Three years later, her $500 is still sitting in my kitchen junk drawer and I've added three more tattoos to the collection. And mother-in-law must be so happy guys that instead of using her gift certificates, OP decided to get three more tattoos. And honestly, if I were in OP's shoes, I would definitely keep that voucher on my fridge where mother-in-law can look at it every single time she comes over. Just so she can see that the $500 she spent to try to insult OP was a waste of money. So here's a fun one. Years ago, I would often babysit my neighbor's 10-year-old daughter. He was a divorced father, with the kind of ex that would send spreadsheets of child-rearing expenses calculated to the penny, and weekly invoices, complete with terms and penalties of her own choosing for late payments. He paid big child supports and generally paid her invoices on time because she would always threaten to cut off access to kiddo if he didn't. So his ex, the snake, and I had basic text messaging contact. She and I had some previous drama because a sudden weather change necessitated a jacket for kiddo. While under my care, we popped into the nearest discount store and I let her pick a jacket. The kiddo loved it, but her mother threw a giant fit at me because it wasn't a brand name jacket. I blew it off and the neighbor and I laughed about it when he reimbursed me. She then gave me the silent treatment. So time moved forward and the father always reimbursed kiddo's expenses and encouraged fun and healthy activities. One day, he called me and apologized that he was getting held up at work and kiddo had an orthodontist appointment. He asked me to take her and I agreed. He called the dentist to authorize. We got there and they wouldn't see her without a payment which was $225. It was necessary. Kiddo's braces were hurting her and dad wasn't available. But I knew that dad would reimburse me, so I put it on my credit card rather than call her snake of a mother. So kiddo got patched up, dad reimbursed me, I paid the card, and I didn't use it. A few months later, I get a past due call from my credit card company. Repeat charges from the orthodontist. So I let dad know and called the orthodontist, who told me that I signed an automatic payment agreement. I gave my heck no, I'm just the babysitter speech and didn't get far with them, so I cancelled the card. Dad apologized profusely, and he reimbursed me. About a month later, I get a nasty call from the orthodontist about my card declining. I kindly inform them that I'm not the parent and provide the snake's phone number. About an hour later, the snake is furiously calling and texting me. I silenced my phone and looked at it later. She maxed out my voicemail and all of her text messages were about how I was abusive by denying her daughter medical care. 
demanding I pay the orthodontist. One voicemail was from the police, letting me know that she filed a complaint. How I could get a copy from my attorney and inquiring about whether I wanted to file a counter complaint. And I sure did. I moved out of state and the prosecutor called me just once to ask questions. And I never heard back from the prosecutor. Last I heard from the kiddo's grandmother, the snake took a plea bargain. Dad got full custody and grandma was enjoying a lot more time with kiddo. So friends, credit card fraud is illegal. Charging stuff to someone else's card is fraud, and she basically ratted her own self out to police by filing a complaint that I wouldn't let her steal from me anymore. She probably pled guilty to theft by deception, forgery, and or both, or a combination of similar charges. I've never cared enough to try to find out, and there's nothing in the world that obligates me to pay for dental care for someone else's kid. That's just a strange stretch. No, that's not a thing. So yeah, I can't imagine why OP's neighbor would divorce such a wonderfully intelligent woman, guys. Like, calling the cops to complain is the dumbest thing she could have done, guys, and I'm glad the husband has full custody now. So this happened when I was 12 years old, and I figured I'd share my experience about an entitled family who tried to steal my red bone coon hound. I grew up on a family farm in the middle of nowhere. We own approximately 350 acres, and we have a ridiculously long driveway and you can't see the house from the main road. So often, people would see our dogs and think they're lost and they would pick them up. We have callers with our contact info on them because of this fact. Now my parents are big on not hunting or removing wild animals unless they're a danger to us. They've always had the mindset that we're living in their home. They were here first. Just respect and be aware of your surroundings. For the most part, the wildlife leaves us and our livestock alone. We had a fairly large cougar, who learned that our llamas made easy meals. The cougar ate all nine of them in less than a year. The last straw was when I was walking in the horse pasture and interrupted the big cat's lunch. Luckily, the family Pyrenees put himself between the cougar and I. Now I have no doubt that if it wasn't for him, I would not be here today. My dad decided that he had to do something. He truly didn't want to use lethal methods, so he starts researching other options. He came across a breeder who breeds coon hounds and reached out. The breeder was extremely helpful and told my dad that most cougars have had some kind of run-in with hunting dogs so they won't be as bold. So we buy a red bone coon hound after doing lots of research on the breed and making sure we could handle one. So with that, Gus Timberchopper was flown from Virginia to Canada and quickly became a valued family member. As anyone knows with any hound, the nose goes down and the ears turn off and Gus becomes a favorite of all of our neighbors as his wandering helps with predators and livestock. Life was peaceful, other than a few trips to the shelter to pick up Gus. The peace would not last long though. Enter the entitled family. They saw our five dogs chilling on our property and decided that they were abandoned or lost. That wasn't the case. My brother and I were playing in the creek and the dogs had wandered away not too far, but far enough that the family didn't see us. So the entitled family pulls off the road, gets out of their vehicle and starts trying to coax my dogs into their van. Three of our dogs ran back to the creek where we were playing. Our Pyrenees named Togo and Gus stayed. The entitled dad somehow caught Gus and starts dragging him to their van. Gus starts to freak out. He starts barking, alerting me that something wasn't right. So I went to see what was happening. Well, 12 year old me saw some random guy trying to throw Gus into his van. And the entitled kids and mom were gushing over how cute he was and how he'll be the perfect dog for them. I wasn't too nervous, as this happens often. People see the dogs, they see no house, and they think they're lost or someone dumped them, and try to help the owners by taking them to a shelter or vet. So with that, I yelled out, Hey, that dog's not lost, he's with us. The entitled kids start to scream that they wanted the dog. They then burst into uncontrollable sobs. That's when the entitled mom asked me to come closer so we don't have to yell. I politely declined and said again that Gus was ours and asked the dad to please stop. The entitled dad grunted, ignored me, and tried to pick up Gus. With that, Gus ends up biting the guy on his hand. The entitled dad let go and Gus came running back to me. The entitled dad looked furious and he starts walking towards me and Gus, yelling that we shouldn't own dogs because clearly we don't train them properly or care for them, and how much better of a home they could offer him. At this point, I was starting to panic because this guy looked so mad, raging about how he'll teach that red bastard proper manners and to teach me a lesson for letting my dogs roam free. 
All the while, I'm backing away while holding onto Gus's collar. Togo quickly stood in front of me, barking at him. I was begging the entitled dad to back off and to leave. But the entitled dad said something along the lines of, I'm taking this dog to teach you a lesson. If you don't look after your pets, they will find a better home. He then tries to reach for my dogs again. I told him to stop, as Togo is very, very protective of me and my brother. And at this point, he starts showing signs of being too aggressive. We didn't want him to bite someone unprovoked. The entitled dad did stop for a moment. Togo was giving the entitled dad lots of warnings. Low growls, bared teeth, lunging, and snapping. The entitled dad ignored all that and tried to grab Gus by the collar and ends up knocking me down. And at that, Togo latches onto the entitled dad's arm and starts to shake his head and yanking the guy off his feet. That's when one of the other dogs who belonged to my uncle came after and starts grabbing the entitled dad by his pant leg. My brother also joined because he heard me scream. I got him to take Gus and told him to run home and get dad. Togo wasn't listening at this point when I tried to get him to let go. The entitled kids and the mom tried to get out to help. Thankfully, they listened when I screamed stop. The entitled dad was yelling to call the dog off and how he would see to it that all of our dogs would be put down and that we would never be allowed to own another dog again. At this point, I was scared, angry, and overwhelmed. I start to cry. I thought that Togo would be put down for sure, and that if the entitled dad took us to court, he'd somehow get Gus. My dad comes racing down the driveway, ready for war. The entitled family starts saying how Togo attacked them unprovoked, and that I misunderstood what they were doing. My dad told the family that the police and an ambulance are arriving, and that they best stay put, and if they decide to drive away, he has pictures of the dad and the vehicle, and he will press every kind of charges he legally can. My dad also called some neighbors to come help if things went sideways. So the police and ambulance arrive, and the entitled dad will need stitches in his arm. They told the police that they thought the dogs weren't mine, and that I was lying, thinking they were strays. I do want to note that none of our dogs looked like strays. They were well-fed, brushed, and spoiled. The entitled dad then said, when I told him to stop or he could get hurt, he took it as I was threatening him, and that's why he didn't listen. Him and his wife were demanding that Togo be put down immediately, and that we're animal hoarders, who need to be charged and banned from owning any kind of animal. The police and paramedics told him that he's very lucky. Togo's a guardian dog, and they're bred for being protectors. Togo was only trying to protect me. The entitled dad did not care though, he took us to court. In the courthouse, the entitled mom came to my parents and she said she had an offer. If they accepted, they would drop the lawsuit. They wanted us to give them Gus. Dad told her to pound sand in less than polite speech. So in the end, thanks to the game cameras that dad had in various places, we had footage. The judge was less than amused, as the entitled family made it sound like I told my dog to attack them when they just wanted to play with the dog. The judge also pointed out that a 12-year-old girl versus a 40-something grown man was not a fair fight, and that my dogs just evened the odds. We did have to isolate Togo and made sure our dogs had microchips and their tattoos were legible. Dad also decided that he'd fence off places so the dogs can't wander. I do wonder sometimes about that entitled family. And I have a question I'd love to ask. After all the expenses, wouldn't it have been cheaper to just buy or adopt a dog rather than steal one? For sure it would be, guys. But you know entitled people, they don't think before acting. And I agree with the cop, guys. The dad is so lucky he only got stitches because he ignored those warning barks that Togo was giving off. And he ended up finding out the hard way. As for Togo, the great Pyrenees guard dog that did his job of protecting his family, Good for you, doggo. Lots of treats for you. And while we're on the topic of people who don't deserve animals, listen to this story that was shared with me, guys. This person writes, So I'm a female, 33 years old, and I'm an educational therapist. I help students with learning differences, and for some cases, I go to their homes for sessions. I also help connect potential cat adopters with shelter cats. I've had cats for 13 years, and I'm on cat number 4. Enter the entitled mother. She's in her mid-40s, and she has a 16-year-old son, only child. The woman asked me about owning a cat, and I very excitedly shared my experiences and gave her the contact of a woman who runs the cat shelter that I got cat number four from. The family's only ever had hamsters and goldfish in a bowl, so I told the parents to manage expectations 
because every pet owner knows that every pet, be it a dog, cat, or bird, is different. And it's got its own personality, so don't compare it to others. And to be patient, loving, and respect boundaries. The next day, the cat shelter that I referred her to contacted me, ranting that her shelter and another shelter have blacklisted Karen from adopting because she was delusional, demanding, entitled, and she gave off tons of red flags. Being the sort of owner who abandons their cat, the first signs of health issues or behavioral problems. The woman told me that the entitled mom's demands were ridiculous. Number one, she only wanted ragdolls, Bengals, Siamese, Siberian, or Norwegian forest cats. Cat people will know that these are the most expensive pedigree cats and can easily start from $1,000. Number two, she only wants a kitten because they're cute but wants the kitten to be well-trained, obedient, and quiet. Number three, she wanted her cats intact, not sterilized, because she wants to breed it in the future. And number four, she wants no health or behavioral issues. So yeah, ban her entitled butt. With that said though, Lord knows which rescuer still gave them an extremely docile and affectionate three-year-old ragdoll mix. So on day number three of owning a cat, I got a text message asking how to make the cat less clingy. The entitled dad was really annoyed that the cat would approach them asking to be pet and scratched daily. He wants me to train the cat to only want to be pet once every three to four days, ideally once a week and not multiple times a day. And I'm thinking, what the heck? The parents also complained that petting the cat once a day for two to five minutes is far too much far too often. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. The dad then starts complaining that the cat doesn't come when they call him by the name they named him three days ago. He complains about the cat zoomies at 3 a.m., complains that the cat sits on a shelf and silently watches them all the time, and he also complains that cat pee and poop smells. The most stupid minor things trigger him, and he was the one who wanted to get a cat in the first place. On day number four, dad has a mental breakdown. He's staying late in the office, supposedly crying for the last two nights to avoid going home to a cat. He then packs a bag and he stays with his parent. On day five, dad issues his wife an ultimatum to get rid of the cat or I'm never returning home. On day number six, the cat is rehomed to a sane, non-entitled cat owner. With that all said, this morning when I was at their home for a session, dad starts blaming me for the cat, saying I manipulated and pressured the wife to get a cat, and they wasted $250 for one week of owning the cat. On top of that, against my advice of buying a small one-pound bag of kibble and a few cans to try out, the mom bought a 40-pound bulk bag of kibble. She also bought fancy ceramic bowls with custom engraved bowl stands and a super luxe cat tree. They couldn't get a refund for those items. He then stated that I give their son two free sessions to make up for the money they wasted because it was all my fault that I pushed the mom to get a cat that they did not want. And I'm thinking, what? I'm still in utter disbelief. I'm trying to figure out how or why the dad snapped and went completely insane. He clearly needs help. I'm surprised the kid turned out normal and he's an overall nice kid because his parents are insane entitled nut jobs. Poor kid, the deck is stacked against him. So here's some info. The parents frequent cat cafes like 10 times a week, so they fully know cats need pets and scratches. The dad even puts cats onto his lap to play with. They pay to give pets to cats, but they don't want to with their own cat when it's free. As to what caused the entitled dad to snap, the mom attributes it to sudden onset male menopause. She's not the sharpest knife. Or she says it could be cat poop brain parasites, which is toxoplasmosis. Yeah, I think the dad just didn't want the full responsibility. It's like that fun aunt or uncle who visits and spoils kids, takes them to the movies, parks, amusement parks, you name it. But kids of their own, never in a million years. But seriously though guys, I have never heard of anyone complaining about petting animals. Like, can you train them to only want to be pet like once a week? Ideally for like 30 seconds because 5 minutes is way too long. (laughs) What a crazy demand. So last year, I moved in with my boyfriend and his dad. My boyfriend and I were in a long-distance relationship for a few years, and I moved across the country to be with him after I finished graduate school. 
Due to such a large distance, I opted to sell my car and buy a new car after moving. When I did this, my boyfriend helped me out by loaning me some money to help pay the down payment, but I've since paid him back. Last week, my boyfriend's older sister, who lives in another state, came to visit, and she stayed in the house with us. It was my first time meeting her, and I thought she was very nice, but I didn't get to know her well. Two days ago, my boyfriend and I were out running errands together, and his sister called him to ask when he would be back, so she could borrow his car to go hang out with her friends that were about an hour away. He told her it would be a while, and then she asked if it was okay to borrow my car. My boyfriend asked me, and I told him I wasn't comfortable with that, and told her no. My boyfriend did tell her no, I heard the entire conversation. Well, a few hours later, my boyfriend and I got home, and my car was gone. I was shocked, and my boyfriend was confused. When we went into the house, dad informed us that he gave my boyfriend's sister the spare key to my car that was in a lockbox because she needed to go somewhere. My boyfriend told him that she asked to drive my car and we told her no, so he didn't understand why she was allowed to take it. And that's when his dad said that since my boyfriend helped pay for my car, therefore it was partly his, which meant that his sister had the right to drive it as well. I was absolutely livid, and I couldn't believe anyone would do something like this. My name is the only one on the title, insurance, etc., as I'm the sole owner. My boyfriend told his dad to call her and tell her to bring my car back immediately, and she said she would be home soon. Well, after two hours, I called the police, and I reported my car stolen because I was worried if it got damaged or something, then I would be forced to pay for the repairs, even though it wasn't my fault. My boyfriend's dad and sister are pissed about this, and they accuse me of trying to get them arrested. They're now demanding that I apologize to them and tell the police it was all a misunderstanding, but I really don't want to because I feel they tried to take advantage of me. My boyfriend does agree with me, but even he says he thinks calling the police to report the car stolen may have been too far. So am I the a-hole for this? Yeah, so I don't think OP is the a-hole at all, and neither do a lot of people because they voted her not the a-hole. Like, she didn't know the sister well at all, guys, and that person ended up taking her car without her permission, so that's stealing. Like, even if she is OP's boyfriend's sister, that doesn't give her a pass to do what she wants. And shame on dad for believing that since his son helped OP with the down payment on her car, that his daughter was entitled to half of it. You are ridiculous, sir. But that is r slash entitled people, guys. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today. I hope you didn't shake your heads too hard, and if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash malicious compliance, which is full of other crazy, crazy stories. The main one being OP's boss attacking her and accusing her of faking a work injury. It's crazy. Go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.